Hello, uh, <clears throat> my name is Justin. This is my first teardown video. Uh, today we're going to be taking apart an HP 8460. And I've actually already gotten a little bit of a head start on it. I went ahead and took out most of the screws. That way you're not sitting there watching me turn a screwdriver for the next 30 minutes or so. You just get to see how the unit comes apart. I will, of course, show you where all the screws came out of and uh, also show you some tips and tricks so no wires get damaged or connections get damaged when you're disassembling or reassembling the unit. So, um, first things first, anytime you disassemble anything, obviously make sure you're grounded, static mat, and also remove the battery. With this unit, this whole bottom panel pops off, slides off rather, it's just this little slide here, opposite battery release, just set that to the side. Now, the screws that I've already taken out, there were one, two, three, right here, up underneath the battery, and I tend to keep screws with the hardware, a lot less likely to lose them, and up underneath the battery, there's going to be one, two, three, tiny little Phillips head screws, and then you're going to have several T8 screws, and four of them are actually going to be located in the corners one two three and four and they're actually these little rubber stoppers as you can see they just kind of pop right out remove those to get to those four screws and you're also going to have these four screws right here which basically hold in the hinges for the LCD part of the hinge anyway then after that, we need to take out the keyboard, which there's a screw right here next to the fan, one here and here above the battery connection. You're also going to, let's go ahead and take this out first, let's take out these two screws for the fan. Sometimes you have to finagle this guy out just a little bit, the fan essentially pulls right up. Then you have one single fan connection. Never want to grab the wires, always grab the connection itself, the connector rather. Get that out of the way. Uh, memory, we can go ahead and pop this out. It's two small levers. You just move them away just a little bit, doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. And memory is also, as you can see, the socket for that is spring loaded so it pops up. Let's see, have a smaller size. Phillips head for the wireless card which is here. It's a small bundle of wires here depending on what option you have. This one's just a standard uh, BG card I believe. There's just two screws for this. So we'll go ahead and remove your wireless card. Get that out of the way. I said most of the grunt work was done on this one. Next thing we can do is go ahead and get the dial-up modem out which is this card here. There's two screws for that. And with this, you want to be a little bit careful because there is a cable that plugs into it as well. And there's a very small socket. You rock it back and forth, pops right up. And you have this tiny cable here that actually goes to your connection up here. It runs along the base enclosure. Pop that, get that out of the way. Uh, I want to go ahead and remove, not sure we can see it. This small connector here, which is for the card reader, you can remove that, and also the connection right here next to it, which is the Bluetooth. There we go. Then there's one screw here and one screw here. These are for the hard drive. Then you have this plastic tab. It's very flexible. You just pull straight back. It'll flex. Pops right up. Then you have one screw down here at the bottom. The hard drive then pulls straight back. Oopsie, put a little too far. It lifts right out. And then up underneath it, as you can see, I have these two screws here. They go right here and right here. Go ahead and close that back. Then you're going to have this one screw right here for the optical drive, which I've already did that. And then you have these two screws, which are actually here and here up underneath it, be sure to take those out. Now besides those screws, you're going to have several more T8s 
around the base enclosure. There's going to be one right here, which is next to the speaker connection. There's going to be one up here next to this little Bluetooth connection here. There's going to be one here next to the optical drive. And then you may have to move these wires out of the way for the wireless connection. There's going to be one right here. Those are all T8s. Go ahead and remove those. Keyboard's undone. Got one, two, three for that. Before we take the bottom panel off, this is one of those gotchas. Go ahead and flip the unit, open it up, put it on its side here, and the easiest way that I've seen to do it, you got to remove the keyboard first. You push in right here, up underneath where the fan was connected. You basically just lay your screwdriver as flat as you can and gently press in. And then when you flip the unit back over, those tabs pop right out. Flip that keyboard. There's your ZIF connector for it right here. There's a very small lever. You want to be gentle with that because these things can be a pain if they pop off and you have to reattach them. So be very careful with that little lever. And there's a the connection itself. So that was already undone, but I wanted to show you that. And there is reason for it, and I'll show you once we get this panel off. With this, I usually grab, you can just put your hand up underneath where the optical drive was, and then right here, in between the gray plastic, the gray and the black, you can put your fingernail, that's the best way to do it. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. You just pull back a little bit, and you'll feel the tabs release. And the way that this bottom panel is, sometimes you'll have to pull up right here next to where the battery terminal is. And this thing actually slides down like this. And the reason that it wraps around that way is because it's actually wrapping around this VGA port right here a little bit around the Ethernet port as well. Mostly the VGA is what catches it because as you can see it's, it's flush. So when you pull this up you may have to you know back and forth just a little bit very gently move it to the side and that will make it easier for you to get to this connection right here which is your audio. Go ahead and pull that off. Bam! There's your base enclosure. Once we have that off <coughs> Go ahead and take off the heat sink. There's actually six screws, but I've already taken this apart, so I think it was these two I tightened. Go ahead and take this off once you have all six screws. It lifts right off. Now, anytime that you do this, of course, hope you guys already know, always put fresh thermal compound down on your processor. There's three screws that hold in the motherboard. First things first, go ahead and take the CMOS battery. It's actually just held up by double stick tape and it's threaded through a little tab right here on the board. Basically unwind it, make sure it's completely free. Once you get that free, there's also a small connector right here. Go ahead and gently pull that straight up. And that's actually for the fingerprint reader on the top panel. We can get our wireless card wires out of the way, the antenna wires out of the way. And they're all Neatly. Okay. Uh, also, the power button is right here and connects here. Be sure to plug this guy back in. That's another gotcha, believe it or not. Now, the reason that we went ahead and unplugged the keyboard is because obviously it's plugged into the bottom here. If you wait until this step and think, oh, I forgot to take out my keyboard and pop the ribbon cable off, this screw here and this screw up here a little on the fragile side, so if I open this up now, you have the potential to break the threading up underneath it, and then you have to replace the entire top panel as well. And you're out two parts. Now we can go ahead and release your LCD cables, the LCD itself here. So those two we can fold backwards. These are the three screws, I don't know if you can see them for the motherboard. There are actually two different sizes. There's one here, up next to the memory, and one over here, near the fan. Those are the larger Phillips head screws, and the smaller one is actually going to be right here next to the CMOS. One more little gotcha is when you are reassembling this unit, there's two things. Gently pull this up. Sometimes you may have to put your finger up underneath here to pop this off of a socket. Basically, this lifts straight up and out. And that socket is right here and here, and that's for the PCM CIA reader here. So when you're reassembling, make sure you want to lay the board in this way. Line up your headphone ports, and it'll literally just lay down, and then make sure you hear that little click. It 
pops back into place. And another very, very important one is right here. This board is actually a USB controller and it's held on by these two screws and it just lifts right off. I can show you just like the dial-up modem. So remove these two screws here. Okay. And then you can just rock it back and forth gently. And it comes right off. And you can see the sockets, how they match up. If you get this all the way back together and then realize, oops, I didn't put the USB controller on. You can actually lift the keyboard off the unit. I'm not going to show you because I don't want to break my top cover. You can actually lift the keyboard off and get to it there. And you can slide it up underneath, plug it back in, put in both screws, and you should be good to go. Uh, that is basically the teardown of an 8460. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Thanks for watching.